No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today, I got an absolute legend in both the, the street world, the fitness world, etc. It's Cali Muscle in the oh, building. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. This is a dream. This is epic. Really? Yeah, yeah, this is epic. Because the thing about Cali Muscle is that I DM'd you. My girl said, she goes, I remember right when I met you. You DM that guy asking for an interview, and I didn't get a response for like four years on Instagram. You a lie. On God, we can show soon right as, now. Soon as you DM me, I responded. I think that you might have a delay on your, your no, Instagram. No, no. <laughs> I, I can show you that. that I did. Uh, what's his name? What you, today, he just said uh, the rapper. Said he didn't look at this DM. He didn't no, know. No, T-Pain. I T-Pain, know. T-Pain, yeah, yeah. And when, and when I was thinking about it, I'm like, I bet that Cali Muscle had a similar no, so experience. so I responded. You and did, but so, like four years later, I'm opening your Instagram. No, so I responded the first time I got DM that I saw I got DM from you. I responded, and you like cool because I had just moved back to LA, right? And so this today is like maybe ten months after we were supposed to do the interview. Mm. Look at this. 2016, June 2016. Yo, Cali, I do a podcast called No Jumper. We have 200K on YouTube. Keep in mind, we're right now at 3.7 million. We interview a ton of rappers. Would love to get you in for an interview. Let me know. And then again in 2019, just watched that back workout video and got reminded how bad I want to interview you. I got three million subscribers now. Let's get it. <laughs> I, didn't, I ain't seen none of that. T Pain, I feel you. And then I, I, ain't seen I, it. I posted it, and they even <laughs> said, "Don't tell Cali Muscle I need that interview." And then, boom, June eighth of this year. Hey, bro, it's Cali Muscle Hood Balls. Well, with you, bro, bro, bro. So finally, damn, I didn't see none of that. Crazy. I'm, I'm. So I'm real. I think it's good that we waited though, because it, it needed time to simmer. Yeah, but I respond. Hmm. I respond to everything. But I, did you know about the request folder? Because that was what kept T Pain from uh, figuring request, out that no. all these people are hitting him up. Uh uh-uh. uh. So I've actually lately turned mine off. The requests? Just DMs. Oh, okay. So only people that I've uh, followed or DM before. Some people trickle in there. Okay. But uh, yeah, because there's a lot of, you know, just weirdo, man, going <laughs> on nowadays. I don't know what happened. But, uh, yeah, so I would have responded. Okay. Well, yeah. I didn't think it was intentional. I figured maybe, you know, this guy's been in the game a long time. He might not necessarily know how the DMs work, <laughs> like T-Pain, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I take pride in being one of the forefront guys on the Internet. You are. I've been on almost 20 years since MySpace. And now there's a million motherfuckers trying to be like you. In the fitness world in particular, it's like the most... They don't have no personality. Right. But everybody wants to be like a fitness influencer now. And it ain't no money in it. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Uh, you know, I was fortunate coming from Oakland, being a hustler, mm. like an opportunist hustler. And so I did everything illegal you could think of, mm. except sell my booty. <laughs> 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 everything else... Cali Muscle did. That's dope that you said that because in the bodybuilding world, there is kind of that that whole dark area right. where you know some of these guys are out there selling jerk off videos to right. guys in Saudi Arabia and shit. Now, I did something similar to OnlyFans uh-huh. back twelve years ago. Okay, it was same as OnlyFans back then. Mm. But once I found out the rim, I'm like, oh, it, hold on, where the women at, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> that, but, yo, but that's an interesting thing about being a bodybuilder is that, like, you know, the gist of the job is basically like being photographed with your shirt off, looking all oiled up and crazy yeah. like that. But then if you sort of like market it towards the gay men, and we all know that gay men are a big percentage of the, mm-hmm. of the fans in bodybuilding, then a lot of the guys will look at you like you're a fucking weirdo, right? Right. And yeah, I yeah. assume that your like personal code might forbid you doing anything a little fruity like that, right? Well, yeah. So, you know, I'm a part of a organization in the Bay Area, 415 Kobe. So in prison, if you, like that was forbidden. Right. You couldn't even talk to a tranny by yourself. Okay. Because they were demonic. <laughs> and they would say, oh, if I go talk to them by myself and they get mad at me, I suck. I gave him head. Yeah, I did. And, mm. bro, mo- most motherfuckers go, bo- like trolls, or say something. And most people believe them. Mm. They'll believe that tranny and you would probably lose your life. You could lose your life. Is that for serious? That, yeah, there, yeah. Yeah, for that tranny saying that he gave you some head behind the uh, 
uh, backdrop over there. <laughs> <laughs> let uh, me uh, let me just let's let's rewind. Mm-hmm. Take me back to your your youth. You growing up in Oakland. Set the scene for me of like what was going on in that world and what you were getting into and what your surroundings were like. So I grew up on 98th and East Street, Drug Street. Okay. Fast. And right. You, you were born when or what? what, what? Uh, seventy five in Oakland. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, nineteen seventy five in Oakland. So I uh, moved to East Street, and it was fast. I'm talking dope. Just everything going on. I never forget my main lesson in life. My mother taught me at it was I was about eight, eight to ten. Uh, you know, as kids, it was so fast. We always in the window in the curtains looking out. Ooh, mm-hmm. What's going on? Ooh. Right. So a dude got his head blew off right in front of my house. My mother grabbed me by the throat, man. Like, hey, motherfucker, you get out of my goddamn curtains and mind your business. Mm. That lesson took me all through my life. So the lesson wasn't a man lost his life. This is very sad. <laughs> no. The lesson was. Keep it moving and don't be looking at that shit because you don't want to get involved. Exactly. Mm. Because they'd come up in her house. And this is what she said. Because they'd come up in here and kill up everybody mm. knowing you saw something or whatever. So that was like my number one lesson in life that I learned. So I lived in a drug area. Went to... Uh, grew up uh, as a kid. I was a good kid, but then my little brother was born. He goes see this too. And... I had an older brother. It was a genius. And um, I'll get to that in a minute. But so he was my role model, my older brother. So went to school, was an okay kid, just a class clown. I, as a kid, I like I am now. Hmm. Was a class clown, real energetic, didn't know how to shut up and said the wildest stuff, stayed getting suspended. And so once my older brother graduated high school, he graduated at Valley Victoria. Hmm. This moment, he was my role. I mean, he was a perfect person. Dress, he was always best dressed, never wore tennis shoes, proper haircut, just a, a outstanding guy, man. And a genius. Graduated, like I say, with a 4.5 GPA, went to college, San Luis Obispo, the academic scholarship. So what happened was I went to the same high school he went to, Castlebot High School. So I tried to follow his footsteps. So I played sports. He didn't. Mm. So I was getting a 3.83 GPA uh, in all the newspapers, football, wrestling, track. So my senior year, he ended up dead at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, my older brother. And so my mother, even though she knew the truth, she told lies about his death. He could have killed himself, but I don't think he did. How did he die? He Killed himself. He did. Yeah, and suicide. Do you, do you know why or what the motivation no, might have been? No, So I was just telling the tax guy just now we was over there. For 30 years later, I'm 41 now. Uh-huh. My mother says he called her crying and said he was going to kill himself. And so I'm like, hold on. So you, f- both of y'all fucked up my life. Left you wondering all those years. And so everybody said when that happened, I changed. I got went dark. When he, Be- when he right, was. I became an introvert. Uh, re- got real violent. Got it. I stayed with guns all through junior high, all my life. I always stayed with a pistol on me. One, one more question though is, mm-hmm. did when he he called your mom and told her that he was, he wanted to kill himself, but still did he not really tell her what the motivation might have been or, or what he was well, so upset about? He, he blamed her not loving him and my little brother was going to be the death of her because that's who her focus was and still is to this day. Wow. Is my little brother by him, everything. Just he's like her God. You chalk that up to like mental illness in general that he probably was just going through all kinds of stuff and didn't really understand or have a way to understand it? So with suicide in my eyes, because the devil got in me other ways. Like if you vulnerable... And this, oh, I think all suicidal people are like this. If you're in a vulnerable moment emotionally, the devil will be like, man, just nobody will care about you. You're going to blow your shit off. Mm. You're vulnerable. It happened to me with violence. Right. Like if I'm, my money got low, the devil come in, but, man, bro, you got that 40 cow. Go hit a bank or something. You trip. You know what mm. I mean? 
And so it's the same thing I feel with suicidal people. It's just a different demon that they're right. fighting against. Well, yeah. Because yeah. well, my demon is violence and, oh, my money low. Look at that bank. And <laughs> it's all self-destruction, you know. You know? It's just well, di yeah. different ways of getting there. You exactly. know, like, like shooting yourself in the head or going and doing a crime that is very, very likely to land you in prison exactly. for 10, 20 years. I mean, it's not so different. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of find out with my family, the men had a curse on it. Really? All the men had a curse. My first uncle, my mother brother drowned. The other brother that I looked up to got in a car accident. My brother killed himself. I end up in prison. My little brother end up in prison and it just, Right now, my cousin, 48, mm. I just found out he got COVID. Now his kidney fell. He on dialysis. And it just, wow. yeah, with the men in my family. His son got an ailment. It's just crazy. But so you were, it sounded like you were a good student and everything, but then you also were, were moving around with guns from an early age. Was that just you had to? Yeah, so what happened, in, what happened in Oakland when the starter jackets came out. Oh, okay. Everybody started robbing for him. Right. So I'll never forget it was this one particular dude. And he, he ended up getting my best friend life in prison. But anyway, so he started going around robbing everybody for their starter jackets. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm like, I'm not letting this fool rob me. So I got me a 22. I was about 12 <laughs> years old. And so I stayed packing it. You know what I mean? And from then, so let me go back. The reason... Also, I started carrying guns because my mother traumatized me as a kid and pulled a gun on me. Whoa. So I, after that, I'm like, I never let nobody whip out first on me in my life. Why did you pull a gun out on you? Well, my little brother lied on me. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so uh, after that moment, I'm like, I never let nobody whip out on me. So I went all through my life with that mentality. Right. In prison, whatever. I ain't let nobody whip out a shank on me. It, Pissed nut first. You're going to stop the problem before well, it starts. Yeah. Well, and I wasn't an uh, arguer or nothing like that. I, I come from, the area I come from, it's the opposite of what today is. Uh -huh. We dress like college students. Right. We wore orgal sweaters, wear little glasses. We wanted to look proper, mm. but was knocking motherfuckers down. Was that you just wanted to look proper because you didn't want to draw attention to yourself in that regard? Well, not or, only that. That was the style at the time? That was a style. All the killers look like squares. Mm. Well, and it came, you know, the mafia. And just back then, when you look at the old mob movies, mm. mafia, Ita that was that era looking suited and booted. And you know what I mean? Like, we took prestige in that. And, and the, era, square. the era now is that you go kill somebody in a rival gang and then you like put it on Instagram. <laughs> right. Like that happens so yeah, I much see. where I see yeah. a video on YouTube and like, oh, they caught this dude. And like, you know, two hours after he sprayed up this this person's house, he tweeted out, LOL, we'd be spraying people's houses up. And yeah. it's like, how are you seriously doing that? You're crazy. Well, you got to think they parents birthed a demon. Mm. That's all that is. That's. Mm. That was their purpose on this earth to be a demon. Mm. I've been on both sides, so I understand. I understand these people. It's just the advertising of it is the crazy part. You know, if you're going to do some crazy shit and get away with it, it's one thing. If you're going to basically make it as easy as possible on the cops, it's another thing. Well, they suicidal. Yeah. They like uh, kamikaze, they don't care. That's what's so crazy <laughs> is to see like 60. They just uh, seen a video about a 16 year old kid in Philly who got four murder charges. And he was just, they got video of him jogging down the street, putting 15 shots in some other kid and then jogging away. Wow. And it's like, like, how did the, I, I want to know about this kid's upbringing so much to mm -hmm. understand how you get a 16 year old kid to that point that he can just gleefully do that, you know? Yeah. This is upbringing the household, uh, the friends he around. Yeah. Uh, me, you know, that's why I believe there's born killers. Mm. I don't know where I got none of this stuff from. Mm. Every, when you go, you could go talk to my ex classmates. What? When they heard I went to prison, whatever. What? That mo he supposed to be going to NFL. He was a senior class president, graduated with 3.83 mm. dress. He was most likely to see best dress. I was vulnerable for that devil to come in. But so it was really your, your brother passed and that changed everything? Yeah, yeah. I, I went super dark at that point. But I was, So my family, I was the go-to guy when 
with problems. Uh -huh. Like I was, I handled problems, so I was known to nip stuff in the bud. Uh, you know, uh, I was just that type of guy. But I wanted to go to the NFL. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to move from Oakland and be a good person. But I always, I just, after my mother did that, I'm like, I never, I'm going to do, and I live by this to this day, I'm going to do whatever I can to live as long as I can. Mm. If that means whopping you first, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. That just, you know, how I live my life after that. And that's God instilled. Mm. It just, I believe there's born killers. Like you talk about the little kid, uh, 16, he was a born killer. But it has to, do you really think he was born that way? I think he had to have been shaped mentally. Like it's, it, there's got to be people around him that are basically putting him on to murder and nobody conditioning put, him to think it's okay to live like this. Nobody put me on the rock. Mm. But I did used to, every day as a kid, 10 o'clock news used to come on. And I used to watch the 10 o'clock news and critique robberies mm. for no apparent reason. Like, right. I would just watch the dudes like, they done. Why he didn't wear a mask? Why he? As a kid, I didn't know why. Mm. And so when I got in bad positions, boom. Oh, I know what to do. I could do. You know what I mean? I thought mm. I knew how to do it, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I think about me as a young guy, though, I was I was shoplifting since as early as I can remember. Me too. I was just taking shit. Clipped and, me too. And, and then my parents taught me it was wrong, uh -huh. and maybe I didn't do it for a while, but then over time, I just started to do it again. And yeah. then once I met other kids who were doing it, then, oh, my God, let's, yeah, go, yeah. let's go crazy. You that know? was me. Yeah. I, I was like, ooh, look at that leather jacket. I go in Macy's. Yeah. Look at that leather jacket. I just go over there, act like it's by, put it on, walk on out. Right. <laughs> and so you're right. It built up. It kept building up. So when you say the born killer thing, I do. I, I see what you're saying to an extent because there's just a lot of people that are just drawn towards doing the wrong thing, yeah. you know? Well, and so it just, you know, you got to stay well away from them because <laughs> they own one. Right. But uh, so, okay, where does your life go from there once you uh, your brother passes and, and your mind state changes? So my brother, uh, he passed. So I went dark, got introverted, antisocial. But I had the scholarship to Fresno. Yeah. So I went to Fresno State on the academic athletic scholarship, joined the fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha, had my little girlfriend, whatnot. And so You're I get in get, college. Does does street shit seem like it's all in the past at this point? You're in a frat. No, I wasn't in so before college, I wasn't in no street shit. I ain't never got pulled over, never went to jail, but juvenile. You're carrying guns and shit. But that was just to be right, careful. That, okay. I worked at 24-hour fitness, the first one ever from the 10th grade to the 12th. Wow, okay. I worked at the gym. So I was already buff when I went to college. But you weren't fucking with gangs or nothing at this point, no. <laughs> Ain't no gangs in Oakland. Hoods. <laughs> right, I, right, I right. was that kid where all, so it's funny, all the dudes I thought was hella older than me, only like one, two years older, <laughs> that, that, right? Yeah. Bro, you have, I was this kid. You have any problems, come get us. We'll knock them down. Mm. I was that kid. Okay. I didn't have to, if I didn't want to, I didn't have to do that. I'd be like, hey, bro. But I was that born one. Okay. That liked, you know, to do that stuff. So so I went to college. This one, I get in trouble. Okay. My roommate, uh, so my brother died. My roommate at the time, uh, what happened was my dorm, they uh, say they didn't have my paperwork. So they like, I'm like, I drove all my, me and my girlfriend stuff down at a U-Haul. And they say my dorm, like they don't have no paperwork on me. So a guy that took me on a tour of the college was like, bro, just come stay with me. Mm -hmm. I got an apartment. You can stay with me. Well, you ain't got to trip on that dorm stuff. Right. So right, I'm a loyalist. So right then this dude was like my family. Uh -huh. He took me in. So he was already in Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. So they had a big party. So I'm over there buff. I, I didn't talk probably at all, dude. Right. I'm over there just watching him, you know. He getting a fight. So I come in, knock dude out. Come to find out, dude is a top. What a, he's a top basketball player at Fresno. Oh, wow. And he's a crit, right? So he telling people over the whole university, tell that buff nigga from Oakland, to cancel Christmas. This is the first time I heard that saying, right? Wow. Yeah. He tell that buck name from Oakland to cancel Christmas. I'm scared to death. I'd hunt me down a gun. 
I go, bro, this is crazy. So I'm hunting, I'm asking people for a gun on campus. Oh, go to room 103, <laughs> dorm room 103. They got them all, right? I go in there, it was like a gun store. In the in the dorm? Yeah. What the fuck? Like stacked up guns and boxes. They're like, what you want, homie? Oh, we got the 380 over here. We got the 38, got the 40. I'm like, I got $125. Oh, yeah, take this 380, boy. He goes with a box of bullets. I got that gun and got possessed. Really? Yeah. Well, from then, uh, I was on the hunt for dude. Really? Because he was telling everybody my girlfriend would come home. She ran track. You were trying to run into him before he ran into you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so I got possessed with it. And so in the midst of me getting possessed with the gun, uh, I go back to Oakland, celebrate my little brother's birthday, and the car break down. I had a Laguna, a Chevy Chevelle Laguna. And loved it. I just had bought it, broke down, engine busted. So I put that in the shop. I'm like, I need 500 bucks. Hmm. Nobody, my mother wouldn't give it to me. I went to Coach Sweetie. He like, a man got to do what a man got to do. And I took that the wrong way. So I'm like, fuck, I, I know how to rob. I've hmm. been studying robbery since I was a kid. Kind of find out my frat brothers, because I joined the frat, Alpha Phi Alpha, they was robbing everything in Fresno. Wow. I didn't even know it. So they end up getting convicted going to the feds after me. But uh, so I found out. I'm like, bro, take me on one. I need some money. They're like, for sure. We got you. Go tomorrow night. And so tomorrow night come and they call me like, oh, we got to cancel. What's up with bro? I'm already amped up. Mm. I'm already <laughs> hype. I'm in all black ready. So I'm walking out the house and my roommate that you know, took me in. He was like an angel, bro. He was, to this day, he a good Christian guy, whatever. And so God sent him to me. So I was walking out the house. He was walking in. He looked at me, and he, you know, he wasn't intimidated or scared of me or that. He put his hand on my shoulder like, what you doing, man? I'm like, I'm nothing. <laughs> right? He like, uh, take your ass in the house, man. What you doing? Right? I was looking demonic and all black. I'm like, no, nah, I'm about to go do something. I got to handle some business. It was midnight, so I'm riding my car up and down the street. And I'm like, finally some senses come to me. I'm like, let me take my butt home. I'm tripping. Uh -huh. And the devil, he was like, bro, turn to your left, boy. Dude at an ATM. And uh, I'm like, and I'm the type of person where when I program myself, I got to do it. Mm. So I look to the left like, damn. He at the wrong place, wrong time. I got to hit him up. Went and robbed him or whatever. And just so happened, <laughs> as I'm coming out from robbing him, riding down the street, he come right behind me, get the license plate number. Ooh. So the reason I did it in that car, you know, me as a kid watching robberies, I think I know everything, whatever. I'm like, I'm going to use this car because it's not in my name. Hmm. Come to find out, I, didn't, I forgot I went to DMV trying to get the car in my name. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and so, man, it wasn't 30 minutes after robbing that man. The whole Fresno police force was at my door. Wow. Yeah. And so I'm so young and evil and demonic. I went to sleep while they was knocking. I'm like, fuck, they ain't got no search warrants. I went to sleep, woke up in the morning, got all the stuff, went on the run. And so after that, they hit all my fraternity brothers' houses. Everybody. Going to sleep while the cops are knocking on your door is well, pretty. That's pretty badass. Oh yeah, that paints a picture <laughs> for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I went, got on the uh, Greyhound, went back to Oakland, and my mother and my stepfather, like, you know, I told them what happened. First time in my life being honest with them. Uh huh. They're like, well, you can be on the run all your life or deal with it. You know what I mean? I'm like, fuck. I was thinking, okay, I had on, you know, dumb, dumb criminal. I had on a hoodie. It was dark. They can't see me. I'm like, forget it. I could probably beat it. So I went back to uh, Fresno, and uh, they arrested me. And so uh, my, my bail was only like 1500 bucks. Right. It was like 15000 They could have bailed me out. I got in, institutionalized in about a week in jail. Really? I was so powerful. Because everybody seen me on the news. Mm. I was buff. Right. So I just came in county jail regulating, and I hadn't experienced that power. 
So I'm they like, we go bail you. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. That, that, that this time attack on some time if I get some time. Right. Oh, I was in there having fun. You were having too much fun. Yeah. And yeah, I was institutionalized immediately. Really? Because my life was so structured, football, wrestling, track, workout, work. Right. That, you know, I was like a robot anyway. Mm. So I just fell right into the jail life. And so uh, what happened was uh, I stayed in there about six months fighting the case. They came at me with probation. Uh. Mm, give it here. I, I'm, I signed. My fraternity brother's there. My brother came down. Boom. I'm like, I'm about to get out, right? Uh, that's why I could never be racist. A black, young DA was my DA. She looked at me. Your Honor, I made a mistake. I got to uh, go to my supervisor. We'll come back at the recess. Boy, I already like, it's over. Uh-huh. <laughs> I already do. It's, all, it's a wrap. She came back at the recess. Oh, uh, no, nah, I made a mistake. I mean, five years, CYA. What's I'm that? I'm like, What's the CYA? Uh, uh, Youth Authority, okay. California Youth Authority. Five years old. Yeah. Now. And so with me, everybody already told me, do not go to YA Youth uh-huh. Authority because your buff ass going to be in there fighting. You ain't going to get out till you're 25. Right. And I was 19 at the time. And so uh, I'm like, let's go to trial. You know what I mean? Because I knew my max was only seven years, I think. They was trying to give me five. I went to trial. They towed my ass up. Because <laughs> <laughs> they had so much evidence on you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but it, I didn't care. Right. I was having fun. Like, let's go. What do you think it was about prison that you kind of got into? You see this when you – certain people, they go into that environment, and it seems like they almost just – they just fall in line right away. Like, well, what, what was it that you were looking for that you found there? For me, it was the po- I was like a celebrity. Mm. It was like how I am now on the streets. Right. So, oh, you the youngster boy. You the, we saw you on TV. You that you, you was playing football. You went and did that ride red, and I was already buff. Mm. So everybody like, Let, I want to work out with you. And it was just back then, fitness in prison was everything. Mm. If you was buff. You was like a god. And right. I was the buffest thing they had seen really at that time. Right. They thought I was covered for a youth authority because usually youngsters come from youth authority buff. But I look like a bodybuilder because I've been training at a gym since 10th grade. Did you have decent access to weights in the gym? Like, were you able to work out more during this time period? I feel like when I in watch prison? Pr- prison shows now, it doesn't feel like they get much access to weights. So, you know, California took the weights in 96. The 96 is when that but happened. But before okay. then, every day I was working out. Really? So what happened was uh, when I got to prison, I caught my case in 1994. Uh, I got two years of working out crazy. Right. I was the best looking dude in California prisons. Uh-huh. And so uh, so what happened was in 1996, they like, okay, we go stop you guys from working out so much. So they broke it down to an hour. Mm. You can only work out for an hour at a time. So we started hearing rumors that they taking the weights. So by that time, I got to San Quentin. And Arnold, you know, he was the guy at the time, uh, passed the bill take the weights out of the prisons. Do you think that was bad overall for the prisoners? No, because and old school correctional officers hated it. Really? Because now you're doing calisthenics. Mm. You not only got strength, you got endurance. Mm. So with the so they excuse was they was worried about correctional officers getting dead fights. That's what I was thinking inmates. is like if you have all these dudes in the prison and they're all just beast mode, they're all huge, then well, it's like what the fuck is the guards going to do? Well, I mean they have guns, but I mean besides Right, that, yeah. exactly. And not to mention you could get life in prison. Mm. That's why there's so many snitches in prison now. Mm. Yeah, so it's a weird dynamic, especially at San Quentin. It was real political. Right. And so uh, they took the weights, but everybody, we improvised. Before they took the weights, I wrote basically a book mm. of what I need to do to sustain uh, my muscle until I get out. Mm. 
And so I would, you know, use water bags, people on my shoulders, callus, st- oh, man, pull-ups, dips, it must have become push-ups. so much harder at that point to, you know, you can only do so many push-ups in comparison to benching 400 pounds. No, I mean, it was funner. It was more fun, okay. Because you got to figure now, oh, let's make a water bag. Mm. Oh, they tripping off water bags. I lost all my time for working out. I was doing squats with a dude on my shoulders, and you wasn't supposed to do that. And so I went to the whole – End up doing seven years off seven because of my infractions I was getting at San Quentin. That's fucked. Yeah. And so, no, guys to me were in better shape Mm. because with the weights, dudes, like how on the streets, they were just power lifters or something, just walking around, Mm. can't breathe and shit. (laughs) Did Did you feel like you almost became like the leader of your race in prison very quickly? Or would you say leader or would you say you became very powerful? And was it super racialized at that point? So let me, uh, I got to go back a little. So I practiced Islam mm. for two years. I was a emir. I learned how to read and write Arabic. Okay. There was all nationalities as Muslims. Okay. So bam, when I got to San Quentin, everybody, all the police labeled me as Kumi 415. Mm. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I didn't even know what it was. But they let, they kept on, oh, oh, can you call me? You oh, oh, like labeling me as a leader. And so finally, all the friends I grew up with, they were that. And so I started talking to them, whatever, seeing how they operated. And so uh, what happened was I was a Muslim. I was a Muslim clerk. And I printed up something, are you tired of being tired? Hmm. So that got posted on San Quentin everywhere. So the police knew exactly where it came from because it's, uh, like fingerprints on all the typewriters and all that stuff. <laughs> so uh, they sent my ass to the hole for 90 days. While I was in the hole, I was in there with the gangs. Mm. So uh, I'm like, man, bro, I'm, you know, I seen that the Muslims, they was fake. They was doing heroin, dope, and they was fake. As I was like, bro, if y'all make me uh, top motherfucking this, I'll become a part of it. I ain't, I'm not go get in it and listen to no dope fiends tell me what to do. Mm. And they're like, bro, we got you. We'll make you a lieutenant as soon as you come here. Boo. And I just rose up the ranks in like 90 days. I was a top dude. Really? Yeah. That's and pretty so, crazy. Uh, but it was a lot to come with it. Uh, you know, you got dudes been in it 10 years, not in that position. They try to knock you down. Right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it was fun and it was... You know, I was playing chess. I just look at my life as like I, I outplay chess, which I played chess eight hours a day at prison. <laughs> really? That's what you guys were into there? Oh, yeah. I would. Uh, so we used to compete on who read the most books a week and chess and, of course, working out. That was my main thing. It sounds pretty positive overall. Yeah, especially, uh, you know, Gangs in there got a negative connotation, but we, you know, Kumi Four and Five, they consider the organization. Mm. I brought positivity to it. Like I got a lot of dudes off dope, working out, uh, just you know, being a good person, best you could be. Do you, you think you became I mean? a better person in there? A lot of people seem like they think they became a worse person in prison. You sound like you kind of kept it mostly positive and might have came out of there more focused. I had to call some shots. Yeah. I had to get down when it's time to get down. So I was a good – so this is – that was a waste of life for me. Mm. I was already smart, intellectual, good guy. Being in – especially in uh, state prison mm. around all them dope fiends. So San Quentin, bro, I used to sell dope in San Quentin. Mm. Like I never even saw – Crack until I got to say it quit. So no, I didn't become a good, or better person because I was doing the legal stuff in there. Yeah, no, yeah. Because <laughs> I worked in R and R reception center, and uh, anybody came in with dope, I would give them bugler, and I like get a twenty five uh, rock that you know twenty five dollars on the street, cut that up, make five hundred. Mm. And so yeah, <laughs> it was just. And San Quentin is the worst, man. It's really? so political and fun, and it's like the streets. Yeah. It's like living in Oakland or Frisco. It's like just always something going. I stayed in the hole at Quentin. Mm. And, because there's 
so much gang stuff going on in there and you're from the the bay where you're from oakland where it's not really that gang shit like how how did they accept you or what was the thought process no so you know quentin is ran by mostly kumi and uh bgf okay yeah there's no bro when i did so i did time and i started off because i called my case in fresno delano wasco to hatchby gang like crips and bloods wasn't tripping right it was like workout, uh, money. They didn't even do dope like Northern California prisons. They right. get a little weed, they cool. <laughs> when I get to San Quentin is when I lost. I was supposed to do five years, ten months. Hmm. I ended up going to San Quentin, losing all my time. Right. Doing seven years off seven. Wow. Wow. They wild in <laughs> the Bay Area. Way wilder than Southern California. So you did seven years in total on this, this run? Yeah, but I was a recidivist. I liked prison. I went back four times. Four more times. So, okay, you well, get out that first time, and, and what do 2001. you do? 2001. I did 94 to 2001. Okay, and then you get out and... I get out, and so I become a stripper, a <laughs> personal trainer, making bread. Really? Out, stripping alone, I was making two, 3000 a weekend. Where were you staying at, and where were you stripping? I was in back in Oakland on 98th and E Street, uh, down the street from my mother. I got an apartment, and... Uh, so I got, I was working at 24 Hour Fitness in San Leandro, and I was with a strip agency called Men of Exotica. Uh huh. Bro, my second day out of prison, I got with the strip agency. We did a fucking strip show for like 10,000 women. Uh-huh. It was a John B. concert. What? Bro, <laughs> that shit. I, I was hooked. All those bras screaming for I got out swole. I was a swollest one. And. Uh, it was, and you were dancing for chicks. I feel like yeah. chicks don't go to male strip clubs no, yeah. anymore. Is it still a thing? It was, yeah, it was huge you got back some then? out here. What's that strip? Uh, you got a couple of strip clubs out here that women go to. Really? Yeah. So was anybody, did you have any reservations about doing this? Was there anybody saying like, nah, that shit's gay to be a stripper? Yeah. And so and you didn't give a fuck or what? I, I wanted to, yeah, I was glad. You, boy, you a good interview. I wanted to touch on that. <laughs> so me being who I was. And by the way, I know some gang members who used to strip back in the day, and I I wouldn't bring it up, but I know it's a thing, so I'm interested with the mentality. Yeah, I know uh, the game or something. (laughs) 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 But uh, no, so listen, so so yeah, I had an issue with it. Mm. So some of the guys in the gang, whatever, like, they got to the founder. They went to the founder. Like, bro, y'all letting the top men on the streets be a stripper? That gay shit? Bro, I found out that I had to get on them. Mm. But, but yeah, so in Oakland, that was a stigma. If you're a stripper, oh, that gay shit, nigga, gay-ass stripper. Well, I'm like, so what happened was I started taking a few of those dudes with me that was calling themselves hardcore gangsters and shit. They're like, bro, shit, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> All that money getting thrown. But, yeah, I, I went against the grain with it because I, didn't, I never gave a fuck. And when you uh, – Get that when you get down for the get, you don't give a fuck with my like, boy, I'd knock your fucking noodles out, right? Like, I didn't care. I was like, that was good money because that was my plan when I went to prison. I'm, I'm gonna get out, be a personal trainer, and a stripper. Hmm. That was the plan, and then I did it within that same week. And but, so, you're probably making pretty fucking good money at that point. Oh man, I was Especially making fresh out of prison. I was making like you figure a weekend I'd make a good three thousand with stripping in my job. Right. So what happened was the reason I went back, uh I got a car, a five point oh Mustang, and I got in an accident on the street on a, a freeway. Excuse me, on a five eighty freeway. And so, you know, I'm like I am now. I like, it's in the shop, I wanna rent the top car. So I rented another Mustang. That shit was like a hundred some a day. Uh-huh. So I'm paying it, waiting on my car. The personal trainer shit, I didn't know it dips. Mm. So it was like uh, it dips in like December, something like that, where oh, yeah. people everybody starts working out and goes right. on vacation and shit. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't know that. Mm. So I'm spending money like crazy, and my money like almost went broke again. Mm. So I'm like, fuck. I get at my little brother. I say, hey, bro, uh, give me one of those half things, man. I'm half a kilo, <laughs> mm. <laughs> right? Bro, I didn't last 90 days. I got that kilo, and I am got everybody on the block selling, and woo-woo. 
police. It's like I think they had a chip in me. And that, I actually, when you see guys keep going back, because they make you get that tuberculosis shot. They force it on your ass. Mm -hmm. I think that's a chip. Well, they, ju I, they just figured out your operations so quickly that... I w it wasn't 90 days. Right. And they threw a case on me. They said, oh, we seen you do like this. I was a third player. A lot oh. of people haven't even... What the fuck is a third player? I, I didn't know either. They said, I gave a nod to one of my workers to sell dope to somebody. Right. Oh, third player, bam, I'm on parole. Now I'm fighting a case. Wow. So I went back to Santa Rita, uh, got a year on a probation violation, and I ended up doing a year total, and they gave me three years. Uh -huh. So I got out again after that on parole, probation, and I'm like, fuck. So I started going to Frisco because I was hot in Oakland. Uh -huh. I started going to tenderloins down there. <laughs> right? I'm a I'm the big dog. Right. The streets is mine. Uh -huh. And I got a line on how many ever I can handle keys. Uh -huh. Oh, you could what, what? Sell it, boy. So right? you got out on that quick bid and then you were like, fuck it, I'm gonna just keep pushing this. Oh, I was big headed after that because I got the line. Right. And and the streets. So the, the strip stripping money slash personal training money might have ended up being what like fifteen thousand a month, something like that, maybe? Maybe about ten. And then but selling Coke is you can make hundred thousand a month. Right? I couldn't. You couldn't. It didn't I last couldn't. long. I, I couldn't. I bro, I was getting unlimited. That's why I knew the dope game was hyped up mm. from movies and stuff like that. I was getting bro, I thought I'm getting burnt. Bro, I know how to cook. My boy, not we got a whole operation. I couldn't make no money. Really? Yeah. Well, you just, you, things you, kept coming up. Yeah, you figure a youngster call you. Hey, can I get a nine pack? Firstly, I'm on parole, probation. I don't trust nobody, so I got a pistol on me. I'm in a hot ass car with rim. I'm I was one of them dumb motherfuckers. Mm. And, and the car, fat, fly ass car, with big rims, hella music, playing the music. <laughs> With a whole nine ounce on me in the pistol. Right. And I got to take it to him in the hood because he ain't got a car or something. So when I get there, huh, give me my 4,500. Bro, I'm 500 short. Uh. <laughs> so you got to go through all that. So I was going through all. I'm like, what the? F I can't get rich selling D, man. Right. So anyway, I went to Tender Lawrence and boom, caught a case out there. Yeah, another third party. They just started just giving me those. Third player went to Frisco County Jail. Went, and was, only that, was that stuff they did before, like the RICO Act shit? Like in terms of like just sort of these, this, so this you nod figured, that you're describing? So you figure this 2001, 2002. Okay. When so this they did is have going RICO on. By then, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so uh, That's federal shit, Oakland, though. they just start playing on that to get the big dogs out the way. Mm. Third player. Like, we seen you give a nod. Mm. What? With no dope found, nothing? Right. And they, the courts would allow it. And so, yeah, they, uh, I caught another case in Frisco and did 90 days. Got out, and I'm like, man, this dope game ain't working for me. I think I'm going to get out and pimp. <laughs> right. That's tight. Yeah, yeah. So I was in the cell with this old school pimp dude. I read all the slim, you know, all them pimp books, Iceberg Slims, and all that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get out and be a pimp. So in the midst of me doing that, I was selling X at the same time. Mm. And so uh, the pimping, that shit. My first day pimping, I knew pimping was simping. In what way? Pimps are suckers, bro. You just have to deal with so much bullshit. You're a taxi cab driver. <laughs> you're a fucking, uh, uh, you, you, you the bodyguard. Mm. You the, uh, you gotta go, uh, buy them clothes, nails, hair. Uh, if they caught, so what made me realize that my ho first hoe, I dropped her off on, uh, International, East 14. Then she was from Frisco. And so I sat her down. Wasn't 30 minutes went by. She like called me. Like, hey, I need you to come give me this big buff nigga about to throw me in the van. Right? So I pull up, I'm Lexus, big rims, with the pistol out. 
Hey, what's happening, bro? What you doing, my hoe, man? <laughs> he said, hey, nigga, the bitch got caught slipping. She was reckless eyeballing. You know what I'm saying? And I say, bro, let unhance my hoe, bro. <laughs> he like, nigga, I'm a, he said something. I'm like, nigga, this song cool me, nigga. Release my bitch, nigga. Mm. He said, all right, this time, but nigga, next time the bitch is had. And, man, right then I flash on shooting him. And I'm like, damn. Here it is, I'm about to possibly kill this man for this broad who go be back home and anyway if I'm in prison doing a hell and I don't even know this broad. Mm. Pimping is for suckers. Right. And I mean, all these girls are just going to tell on you in the end anyway, right? You don't know if they tucking. I did it for two years, bro. Mm. You don't know if they tucking money, what they doing. Right. As soon as they get tired of your ass, oh, he beat me. You doing the hell. Did I got ever, partners doing life. You ever feel like you made good money during that time period, or was it always Man, fucked up? I, I told all my hoes skedaddle, <laughs> and went and started cutting hair, making a thousand a week, cutting hair and selling e. Really? But, you got homies who have life over prostitution cases? Fuck yeah! Wow. You, what's that website Maroy had that died? He used to do all the pimp videos. Backpage? No. No. I'm gonna think of it, Maroy. Uh, if you look on, uh, if you Google his name, it'll pop up all the pip. So anyway, he used to do all the interviews in Vegas with all those guys that was getting life. and. Okay. Oh, man, I got partners in Oakland, Ailes. Wow. Life without some shit for Pippa. That's crazy. Yeah. They really wanted to shut that shit down, huh? Yeah, but they was, someone was doing stupid stuff, you know, beating abroad or something mm -hmm. like that. But pimping is stupid. Yeah, it all gets lumped in with the human trafficking shit. So it's like well, if, you're, if you're just like pimping a couple girls, it's like you're going to get lumped in with these dudes who are shipping a fucking box container with 100 girls from China and well, exactly. like turning them into sex slaves well, and all this kind of shit, you know? Well, I've been watching some stuff lately. What's that uh, channel name? Yeah, belly white, white belly. Oh, the soft white underbelly. So I'll be watching his yes. little thing with the guys, whatever. They just... They evidently are professional pips mm. that, you know, but, you know, most of them been to prison or whatever, but uh, ain't no money in that shit, bro. Isn't that shit crazy? Because when I watch Soft White Underbelly, it's like, these are all the people that I walk by on the street <laughs> and I don't really want to talk to you or nothing. Like, these are the people like sitting down doing an interview that are the most lost and the most fucked up in society wow. when you're walking down the street and some hooker tries to holler at you and you keep on walking. Well, exactly. That's, that's who they have on there. It's yeah. pretty wild. Well, it is. He, doing this, he came up with a great idea mm. <laughs> to do that. But, yeah, I watched them guys, and, man, they, I, they, they ain't doing it. I got some pit partners. They, you ain't, bro. That little, those crumbs. Mm. Like for me, I had a minimum five hundred a night for the bras. At one time, at the most, I had five bras. Mm. Twenty five hundred, right? With headache. I'm talking. I stayed with a headache. Mm. Like you just got to talk. So that got me prepared for L.A. and acting. Mm. I had to talk a lot, and I wasn't that type of guy. And so you figure twenty five hundred. You got to get all of them a room. You got to get their nails done, hair, food, all that. Bro, you'd be lucky to end up with 500 bucks. Where we're, where <laughs> we're at right now in your life, don't you look at like a girl taking five different dicks in her for 500 bucks on a night, and you're like, God damn. Well, that's tough, man. Oh, were they nymphos? <laughs> no, all so of them So they were nymphos. fucking with it. Oh, they didn't mind. Of, yeah, all of them nymphos. <laughs> you okay. you got to be a nympho to be in that game. That's probably a lot of truth to that. Well, so, okay, you get a lot. Did you actually, you, you just stopped doing that and you became a barber? So. No, so I caught a couple of more cases. So my last case was a high speed chase. Oh man! I had a pistol in the car and heroin. I was trying to <laughs> move some heroin. You know what I'm saying? They said the big money was in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I jinxed myself too. A week before that, I'm like, if the police get on me, nigga, it's on. We're all right. So I was in the Lexus, and uh, so I got set up though. I had this uh, one of my gang associates with me. And uh, so I caught, I caught f four cases with the same police. Hmm. And so I ended up having a lawsuit on them, on OPD, whatever. But anyway, so I got in a high-speed chase, got away, got out the car, but I couldn't get the pistol. Hmm. So uh, 
and the guy, the police knew it was me. We eyeballed each other, passed by. He knew I was on parole, probation, everything. So they let me just chill for three months. Mm. I put the car up in storage, and this how I'm telling people, they got tracking devices on your ass. So I told my mother, I'm about to get that car out of storage. Mm. She said, boy, leave that car alone. I said, no, nah, I'm getting it. Got that car, got it detailed, washed up. My boy's sister was about to buy it. I'm like, nah, I love this. It was an LS400, old 24-inch rims back in 0304. So uh, as soon as I drive that fucking Lexus, the whole Oakland police force get on me. Wow. Yeah, and charge me with that high-speed chase of the pistol. So I ended up doing 16 months off that. So after that, I got out, became a barber, um, moved, some shit went down, and I got back violent in violent mode and uh, ended up moving to L.A. in 2010. Okay. And so... Uh, and was fitness always still a huge part of your life this whole time? you were? So that's the... The weird thing, going through all this, bro, I used to pop pills from Thursday to Sunday. Oh, wow. Uh, just wild, right? I mean, I was wild. Every day at 10, I went to the gym. Really? Didn't know why. Some guys just got it in them. Like, yeah. some guys, they just, that that's who they are. Right. It's you like, know? when I look back on it, I'm like, God had all this plan. Mm. Why would, that's weird. I'm talking about it. I'm pimping all night, popping pills, but I'm like, oh, shit, it's 10 o'clock. I, I'm, <laughs> I used to take the hoes with me and everything. Mm. I got to go to the gym, man. I don't care. I could be hungover. I remember one time I was doing leg press, threw up everywhere, still high, and that was weird. What but do you was, think you love about it so much? Me? What is it out? about lifting that makes you just really so if committed you, to it? If anybody in this world go to a casino – and hit for ten thousand dollars, they first time uh, on the crap table. Mm -hmm. They go be hooked. Right. My first ninety days working out, I look like a fucking bodybuilder. <laughs> you got the genetics out the ass, huh? But I read a magazine where Arnold said you got to eat six thousand calories. Mm. And so, this is the story with that. My uncle was buff. I seen that a man was supposed to be buff mm. as a kid. Started playing sports. I was too small. So my ninth grade year playing football at Castlemont, I rode the bench. Mm. So this fucking anger just got in me, man. And I'm like, I'm going to show these motherfuckers next season. So I worked, I read that magazine. Arnold said he's 6,000 calories, do 10 to 12 reps. I came back that ten, my 10th grade year, 140 pounds. I was 99 when I started smacking everybody. Mm. Just I was out of my mind. They like, what? What happened to you in that time period? They put me on varsity. So I was cornerback on varsity all league. Like, I was everything after that. But in the meantime of that, I started getting migraines mm. real bad. And people don't know this about me. I used to get migraines like two to three times a week. But my migraines was like strokes. Mm. Like, one side of my body would go numb. i lose my vision. Um... Just, uh, you know, a host of stuff would happen in the time period of an hour. Mm. And so I went and got CAT scans, all that. They couldn't figure it out. So what I end up year that lasted for like 20-something years. And so uh, what happened, what I figured out was now I'm cured of it. I don't yeah. get them no more. I used to get allergies. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of me getting allergies, like I was a maniac with working out. Like, ah, you just crying every fucking day. Just. So in the midst of me having a, my, a allergy, you know, sinus attack, whatever it was, I would work out like crazy to get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would take for me to throw up. I would throw up every day. And so, uh, so I think it was just me having allergies, but would work out like crazy. I wasn't supposed to go that hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, that transpired, bro. Shit, I was 30 something. Right. Well, but you just fell in love with the fact that, because, you know, for a lot of people, they'll go work out, even if they work out five days a week for a few months. You know, you might feel your chest feels a little bit more poked out. But I mean, with you, you saw crazy results. Yeah, and that so, just got you addicted to so it. So, what huh? happened with me, 
but it was that fire of them not letting me play mm. football. So I read the magazine. Arnold said he ate 6,000 calories, did that. I forced, I hate food. I don't like food now. People think I do. Really? I just do mukbangs and shit for videos. <laughs> but if I didn't have to eat, I wouldn't. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, I force fed myself. I used to be gagging. Uh, uh. I came back swole mm. in 90 days. Them motherfuckers like you. And this one, Ben Johnson, the track star. This one, Roy's first, the talks of Roy's started coming out. They started calling me that on in the neighborhood. Mm. Boy, you on that Ben Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> right. I didn't know what the fuck they, I didn't know what Roy's was. I was 34 years old. And so. Uh, you never fucking touched steroids until you were 34? Yeah. So like 10 years ago? Well, I didn't know what the, what it was. Really? I, I, I remember I knocked the motherfucker out. I was fresh out of prison. Like the second day out, I was at a gas station. A dude, damn, boy, you on the road. I knocked him out. For saying it Cause, to you. Yeah, because in, in the pen and shit, you, get, you better not say that to a motherfucker. Right. You know, they get real angry. And <laughs> I mean, you ever heard that someone having steroids in prison? Yeah. Really? Uh, that happens after, too? After, when I was at Tehachapi, I told the story on my life story. Uh, some of the guys was getting like D-ball and shit like that. Right. But I got approached with it once, and like I said, I was ready to knock him out. Really? Like, nigga, what? I'm swoller than you eating Top Ramen. What the fuck I need to pay? And they was, I mean, they, the prices was outrageous. Right. Like, for one deep boy, he wanted, like, a case of Top Ramen or something. Like, you better get the fuck out of my face with that, boy. I'm the swollest thing in California penal system. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but is it is it hard to pack on size when you're locked up because you're no. you're eating fucking ramen and cans Hell, of tuna it's fish easy. and shit? You gotta think niggas sleeping twelve hours a day, mm. eating all those high sodium, high sugar carbs. That's and, gotta be the weirdest thing about being locked up is that it's terrible, but you know, you in a way, it's got to be kind of relaxing because, like you're saying, you get to sleep a lot. Well, you get to sort of like sit around, read a book for a few hours. All these things that you you just don't get to live this slow way of life if you're like in any way motivated on the outside. So that's why I was a recidivist. Mm. I felt more powerful, less stressed in prison. Mm. That's why I didn't mind going back. That's why dudes be recidivists. Now, if you, you know, if you are a if you uh, in a game that is a lot of violence, you less likely want to go back. Mm -hmm. Texas prisons, oh, they got them in 120 degree weather. Like, if you go back to that, you a damn idiot. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, but in California prison, for me, it was fun. Right. It wasn't fun the last time I went back. I was angry, real violent because I had lived good. Mm. And had to go back amongst dope heads. So okay, that happens after you moved to LA and started. No, no, to... no. I never went back after LA. Oh, okay. That was right before I went came to LA. Since I've been in LA, it's been you know nothing but positivity and good. So you moved out, and during all that, I, I remember you talking in a video saying that at one time you wanted to be a professional bodybuilder and you did some shows around. Well, yeah, what that's year what was that? So that's why I uh, moved to LA. Uh, oh, okay. I had started doing shows in 2009, right before I moved to L.A., mm. and uh, first show I won out of 30 motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. so, um, and so I'm like, damn, I could do this and shit. And that you got know you the... your pro card? or did No, you... no, I never okay. got my pro okay. card. Um, so I was 34 at that point, and so I won that show. I'm like, oh, this might be some money to be made. I right. thought it was money in bodybuilding. But it's only really money if so you're like I the was, number one guys, right? So I was wealthy from selling X. I used to ship ecstasy to Denver mm. for two years. Right. So I was making like 10 grand a week or something like that shipping E. Wow. So I'm like, damn, I got all this money. Let me try this bodybuilding shit. I knew it costed to, you know, get involved in it. And so, uh, boom, won my first show. Uh, after that, I think I moved to L.A. I won the Orange County class. I think after that, I moved to L.A. Like, I'm going to be a pro bodybuilder. And this is around the time that you first started fucking with steroids? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. That's when I first learned about it. Right. And uh, and so I'm like, shit, I got what it takes. So I kept doing these shows and winning them. And so uh, 
I couldn't win a national show though because I couldn't swell up my legs how they wanted me to. Mm. I, it's certain drugs you got to take to swell up your legs like that. Right. And at the time, I didn't have access to it or know nobody to have access to it. Uh-huh. And so I uh, kept doing the shows, trying to swell up my legs, thinking I supposed to squat 600 pounds, and, and that ain't even it. You right. know what I mean? Motherfuckers, they don't even know, bro, that they did it. I didn't know. As you got deeper into that shit, were you just like kind of horrified by the amount of drugs and all so, the insane shit that these dudes are doing? Yeah, so let me tell you. So I did my last show in 2014, I want to say. Yeah, I won a West Coast Classic. Uh-huh. First place overall. So I got at some coaches. This is my first time inquiring or getting at coaches. I'm like, bro, I want to go pro now. I did 14 shows. I think it's time. I'm, I was famous, though, mm. at the time. And they like, yeah. They sent me over a fucking list. Get the fuck out of here, It bro. was insane. Yeah, I like riding Benzes. I like living good. I, I'm not poking my fucking self every day, three, four times. Like, get the fuck out of They're here, They're on bro. the insulin and shit, right? All that, bro, that's that the next level. Kill you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's like shit. the next level yeah, of getting huge, Yeah, I tried that huh? shit and almost died. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that's so crazy. Wow. Wow. So, so yeah, I mean, that, that did you end up just being left with a... Because a lot, a lot of those guys, let's be honest, or I assume a lot of those guys are kind of like pretty boy weirdo types and you've uh -huh. like been through so much in your life that it's like you just are going to be looking at this shit in a different light so let me say this and i was telling uh my business partner miles if 10th place could get a million mm. first place could get 10 million i would still do that shit right ain't no money these niggas bro i remember what the goals vid is <laughs> one of the top people that i'll you know like, damn, he's swole. He on the Olympia stage driving a bucket. Hmm. I come from Oakland with 12, 13-year-olds driving Benz. Right. And you telling me this grown-ass man in a fucking Fiat or a Honda? Who looks like a fucking Greek god. Exactly. Is walking around carrying himself well, like he's the coolest shit in the exactly. world. Exactly. <laughs> butt around, butt sticking out and shit yeah. like <laughs> Driving a bucket. <laughs> Nigga, get the fuck. Nah, it, when I seen it wasn't no money, I was like, okay. Mm. At that time, though, social media was on fire. Mm. Uh, but came did, out. did you think that if you really went for it, that you could have been like one of the top bodybuilders if you had really gone for it? Did you feel like you had the genetics and if you were willing to do all the drugs? Yeah. If mm. I was willing to, the drug part is the main part. Mm. If I was willing to pump myself every day, yeah, I would have had it. Because a good example of me is uh, uh, Brandon Curry. He won a Mr. Olympia two years ago. Okay. But he had the same problem I was having was swelling up his legs. Right. But he got with the right motherfuckers, swelled them motherfuckers up. <laughs> I remember when I first got into, like, learning about bodybuilding culture, like, when I first started lifting weights in, like, 2003. And then I started to really – I was reading the, the Get Big forums at the mm -hmm. time. Me too. And I remember just real – like, seeing all these grown men just argue about the, the detail in a guy's right. ass. Yeah. Like, how much veins and stretch Weird. and everything that you could see in just the ass. Well. And, like, oh, he's never going to be great because his ass isn't striated exactly. enough or whatever. And just being like – Weird what the shit. fuck yeah. is this world? Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. And that's why I make fun of it in my videos yeah. and stuff nowadays. Because it's just, once I saw it wasn't no money involved, it's like, it, it's weird now. It, it's purposeless. But I think you had the, the genius observation, which was like, there's still a role for a guy who's a big motherfucker. Yeah. It's just like, why put myself in the world of all these other big motherfuckers? No, I'm going to be the dude who goes out and does stuff in, and manages to get people to pay attention exactly. to him using that that Like that Arnold work, did. You know? yeah. Like Arnold did. And that's, I'll never forget, I talked to Arnold at Gold's Venice and he was like, he talked to me for 30 minutes. Really? He like, I love what you're doing. I see all the haters. Don't worry. Keep doing your thing. And, uh, cause I, bro, I had did 20 national commercials. Mm. I like, Bodybuilders have been in L.A. long before B, and they wasn't booking shit. And why do you think you were able to be successful in that regard? I came in with that charisma personality. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget my first acting class, Daphne Kirby, commercial uh, coach, acting coach. I came in. I was still rough around the edges. I had just moved to L.A. I had been in some shootouts before I been in L.A. I was rough hmm. around the edges. She said, I got it. 
when you come in the room, you be like, hey, guys, I'm Kali Muscle. Anybody allergic to muscle? <laughs> so every audition I went in, that was my opening line. Right. Booked it. Wow. That's just, amazing. Hollywood, they just want to know if you cool to work with. Mm. That's, so when people be like, uh, when they be fucking uh, glorifying actors, I'm like, mother, he ain't no, they just like him. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? People try to put, I seen when all the stuff was going on in the world, people was expecting the actors and stuff to, it's a regular motherfucker went for a role. Like, <laughs> right. y'all putting all this uh, pressure on these people. And there's 20 other dudes who might look kind of like you and they're kind of big like you. And it's like, what, what's going to make you stand out? It's personality. So my, and not only that, my advantage was I stay shredded and cut mm, you did all, all the time. time. Okay. Well, all, those guys come in puffy. Hello, I'm Vlad. You know, <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just hella like, you know, robotish. I come right. in, make everybody laugh and... But that comes from my, you know, me being a kid. I was a class clown and funny, and just when you don't do, I, I don't care about looking, making myself look stupid or crazy. And my videos show that. Mm. So, so you booked a whole shitload of different jobs and everything, and I was killing it. That was probably going great. But when did you really start to feel like you went viral? Was there was when there that a- life story came out? Monster, oh, okay. the Kali Muscle story came out. Right. So I didn't want to do it. Dude was contacting me for two years. Like nigga, I just made half a million doing commercials. Wow! I'm not about to scare these white people mm-hmm. and tell them my story. You know. What <laughs> so I'm you saying? were kind of scared to tell them the real story. Fuck yeah. Oh, okay. I'm thinking yeah. of uh, you got to you got you got to just sell that shit back to them. No, I was scared, <laughs> right? And so uh, what happened was acting got slow. Oh. I stopped. I didn't go on audition for like a month or two. So dude called me in the midst of that. Like Kylie, I'm telling you, let's do this life story. Woo. I'm like, I prayed on it, bro. I was like, fuck it, let's do it. Mm. And I'm thinking, okay, get 100,000 views or something, bro. And one day, that shit was like, like 2 million views. Wow. And YouTube, YouTube, that's what I tell people. All these platforms make who they want famous to be famous. It's true. They put that fucking story on the... Back mm-hmm. then, it was a front page. It's like trending now, but it was bigger back then. Mm-hmm. It was like Instagram when they had... Uh, Remember they had uh, when shit go viral. What was that called? That page? Oh, the explore page. Yeah. Yeah, but it was called something else. The popular, popular. page. Yeah. Man, that was so what, yeah. YouTube had that. Soon right. as you log on, boom, my shit was right there. Well, uh, not, they made me, bro. Right. Well, uh, and so then you were like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel." No, I already had it. Oh, okay. So you already. So I already had that. a couple of viral videos doing muscle ups, talking crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. uh so when that life story came out, a Raz shot it. He he is genius, bro. And he was like, "We got to do another video, workout video, right after that." So I did a viral video. I was all swollen up, talking bad shit, throwing weights around, and it just shocked the world. Mm. But yeah, did muscle up video. They hadn't seen nobody my size doing that. Mm. So I just kept banging out viral videos. Mm. Yeah, and so uh, and at the same time, I had like four national commercials out. Right, the Geico, the Taco Bell, a Snicker. I had all those, everything hit at once. Wow. Well, yeah. that's pretty. So amazing. what happened was though, I wasn't used to trolls. <laughs> Some motherfuckers came on and said I did gay porn. Oh yeah. So I'm like, oh, and so what happened? It, it wasn't just them saying it. They went on Old Navy YouTube channel and left the cabin. Old Navy. Uh, old, yeah. <laughs> old Navy. They called my agent. They said, if he did gay porn and in his contract said he didn't do no pornograph, we're going to sue his ass. Bro, I got scared to death. And I didn't do it, you know what I mean? But right. I'm like, damn, if a motherfucker leave one comment, people run with it. I can't I believe wrote, it when you do an old Navy campaign that you have to sign a contract that says you've never done porn, which I guess makes yeah, sense, but well, I guess oh, that's why I never kids. got an old Navy deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, right then, I'm like, I better write my book because they going to go deeper and see prison mm. and robbery and all this bad stuff. 
So I wrote my book and got a publisher, which I now I self-publish, but I got a publisher to pick it up and I did my book mm. right like immediately during the midst of that stuff. Really? Yeah. Because you just wanted to be the one to tell your story. Exactly. Yeah. Because that was scary, bro. Well, and when I did that commercial, I got the most paranoid in my life. Really? Just because of those comments and shit? And no, just, thinking... just because, you know, I did some stuff where I'm like, these motherfuckers have an idea, you know what I mean? It could come back on me. Right. So, yeah, I was scared, bro. Because I never took pictures or videos. and I, I came from the that culture where we didn't take pictures or videos. Mm. I probably only got three pictures of me as a teenager. I got a couple pictures in prison. Like, I don't have many yeah, pictures of me young. My whole so. high school career, I, I got like five fucking right. random photos laying around. Well, <laughs> it's well. like there's whole periods in my life that I couldn't like prove to somebody that I existed during that time. Yeah. Period. It's all in my memory. Same here. I just found after four, wait, 36 years, because people used to think I was bullshitting when I said I played for Fresno State. Right. So I finally came across the roster mm, on the internet, okay. on Google. That uh, solidifies that I played for. Right. Well, yeah. Damn, crazy. So um, how would you, yeah, so like with the YouTube thing, like what was your process in terms of how you started doing the videos? Because it, it, it feels like your, your YouTube channel has been through so many different yeah. phases and different periods. And in the beginning, it was like you were going viral for doing like, you know, the prison workout meals and, mm -hmm. and, and it felt like more fake then too because you you clearly like rented a fake jail cell to well, that film was, that you know prison that was youtube video. space really that's yeah. where there was oh, yeah that amazing. was youtube space okay yeah so i had a good guy a rash at the time that did the documentary mm. so he was a i told miles he was before his time okay but he just couldn't like so he started ct fletcher's as well okay he did his first video. He did mine. I seen y'all working out in uh, Compton and shit. Oh, that yeah, was some that was, other classic that, content. No, that was the most memorable workout ever. A lot of stuff happened that day. Oh, really? It got yeah. political? Okay. Yeah. No, no. It was fun, but oh, a lot okay. of incidents. But um, so he, a rash just stayed on it. Mm. He had the mind like, oh, let's go do this video. Let's go do that. Do, do. But what happened was he got slow. You know what I mean? Like he, I'm like, look, come on, bro. We got to need a video. His mind just wandered off. Mm. So I'm like, fuck that. I learned how, I learned all about YouTube space. I learned about cameras, how to film, how to mm. edit. So, bro, he fell off. I started putting up a tripod myself. I like the fact that you quite clearly took the same energy that you had for dope dealing and drug trafficking and, and pimping and all this stuff and just took that same exact thing yeah. with YouTube. Like, it's the same thing. It's a hustle. You, exactly. you got to figure out every little piece of it to make your hustle better. Yeah. Well, and so that's what I did. So the fitness stuff was hidden for a couple of years. Because mm. I've been on YouTube now 12 years. Right. So it's like you have to go through these changes. People just aren't going to want to see the same thing over yeah, and over. Exactly. And that's, as you see, damn near everybody that was there fell off. Mm. It's because they didn't learn to transition. So what happened to me, the fitness stuff was hidden. Then I'm like, damn, it started dipping. The views, right? I'm like, damn, gaming came along. Mm. I'm like, hmm, I haven't played a game in 25 years. But I see this motherfucker, Dr. Disrespect, just made this much money. Mm. Let me go buy a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought the whole setup, start streaming. So I got the younger, a younger crowd, right. fan base. And I, oh, it was, a, streaming just allowed me to be wild, just reckless, say all type of bizarre stuff. And I was making like $1,000 a day just in donations. Wow, really? Yeah. So I'm like, shoot. I kept doing that for like four years. Uh -huh. And I would do a workout here and there, whatever. And so that started dipping. Because I was on Twitch and YouTube. And uh, so what happened is uh, face, a lot of people don't know, bro. So the most of my income now is from Facebook. Really? 99% of the world don't even know what's going on. I know. Isn't it crazy? I hear yeah. about that from people. For us, it's like impossible to stay monetized on there. They just take it away oh, yeah. all the fucking time for some yeah, reason. Yeah. But that's crazy that that's where all your money comes from. Yeah. Majority of it is from uh, Facebook. And uh, 
So what happened was I started posting my old videos on Facebook. Uh -huh. Once they sent out that email, like a couple of years, it had been two, three years ago. Right. I was getting, I was going viral on Facebook. Mm -hmm. e I'm talking about YouTube was like, and people, they try to clown me when I say it, but it was like gas money yeah. compared to Facebook. And uh, I'll never forget the first time I heard it was from uh, Waka Flocka. And this was like five years before mine got monetized. Mm. Walker Flocka said most of his money was coming from Facebook. Five years before mine got monetized. Right. I'm like, what? What the hell that nigga time? Ain't no Facebook monetized. Right. And so, yeah. So uh, I started banging out. Because my you when Admageddon hit, mm. at first I was like, oh, it's bullshit. That shit dipped on YouTube. <laughs> and so my Facebook at the time blew up. Mm. And so, uh, yeah, and so I started streaming. So what happened was uh, when me and him got together, like, last year or whatever, like, it just, everything got unbelievable. Mm. Me posting every day. Right. It, but in the mean, so I started off, uh, I did some workout videos, but I'm like, huh, let's try this mukbang shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was wondering, yeah, like when your channel sort of shifts into trying all these different trends and stuff, is it usually you coming up with the idea or or do you have anyone on your team who's kind of like, hey, Cali, you should you should start doing these types of things? So before last year, you know, my team, your team, me. <laughs> OK, that's all it was me. Right. He, he just uh, since he used to film for me uh, seven years ago, we split up. I moved to Vegas. What that woo woo. Everything was me, bro. Mm. Putting up my tripod, filming myself, editing, everything was me. Really? Until he came along, yeah. And so, uh, but with the mukbangs, we like, let's try it. Let me eat on camera. Right. Boom! Blew up. Super viral. Uh, what? They like a motherfucker eating on camera? Yesterday? <laughs> let me tell you what I ate yesterday. It's the same thing I eat most days. Was I wake up, I ate three eggs and three slices of bacon, then drink coffee, I had a salad, then I had another salad. Then I was getting ready for your interview, and I watched you eat fucking Popeyes yeah. while doing ASMR. Yeah. And I got my ass on Postmates, and I ordered Popeyes. So thank you for that. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm a good advertiser. Extra Popeye. thousand calories right Sign there. Sign a real nigga up. <laughs> thousand calories I did not have to eat there. I didn't get the apple pie, though. So I felt oh, kind of yeah, right yeah, about yeah. that. Popeyes started messing up my stomach. But uh, yeah, yeah so, Same. so with me, uh, like I say, I'm not a foodie. So that was it's more just entertainment. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh it hit, bro. Especially on Facebook. Oh man. I got videos, twenty million views and I just I'm like, people like watching the motherfucker eat on camera. <laughs> Fuck it, let's do it. You know, and then uh lately what happened was the cars. I noticed that. So, you know, me growing up, I had nice car here and there, whatever, rims, music. So me and him was messing around, and I'm like, uh, let's go to Dodge, bro. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the hype is about uh, this Hellcat or whatever. So we went, dude hyped it up. And you kind of made me want a Hellcat, too. Oh, you need one. Yeah. It's life, bro. I need a garage. Well, it's life. Yeah. I got three now. Yeah, so uh, so we went to Dodge, and uh, dude hyped it up. So I got one, got in it, whatever, bought it. My fucking fan. I got a whole nother fan base. It's all the car people. I've been seeing car shit, tall guy, all these dudes do, do car. I wasn't tripping all that shit. Right. And once I got to it, it blew up. I'm like, what the fuck? And so I didn't even, people think I've been faking buying these cars. Right. So what happened, we bought that. I went to another lot. All this was just not planned, just me messing around. Uh huh. And I go to another car lot. Damn, that's tight. Let's see if I can get it. <laughs> we go to finance office. You approved. I'm like, what? Oh, shit. What's so you've my actually score? been buying all these cars? Yeah. Really? And so we go to another one. We go. I think he go get his and I'm his go viral. I'm like, shit. I go another lot. Get a GT 500. Zero down, boy. That's what I want. What is mine? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you just have like the, these insane monthly payments now where you just have to be paying all the shit off? Uh, a couple of them. <sighs> the, like the GT63, and but the other ones, no. But how many cars do you have at this point? Seven. I mean, that's a lot of cars. 
Bro, when I look at like it's a couple other YouTubers, that ain't shit. Right. I gotta catch up to them. Just seems kind of overwhelming to have that many fucking cars. For content is not. For content, I could see it. Right. Yeah. For content is paying for itself. But it's like a two hundred thousand dollar car is a pretty big investment for your content. Well, all of mine are a hundred. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they a hundred. What was that ghoul that you were thinking about getting? Right, that's two hundred. <laughs> That'd be two hundred. But it all you know, as us as content creators, whatever, like I did the math and all that stuff and Facebook is like, bro, I could two, three months. Just I won't even have notes on those motherfuckers off from Facebook. We gotta figure our Facebook <laughs> shit out, man. What the fuck? Yeah. That's insane. Well, so uh yeah, it's awesome. It's working out and uh, the car shit on. But now we're doing vloggy, mm. but we always add in car stuff. And then, of course, I got my supplement line. and Yeah, know, how, how is that? Because is, is, it seems like it's pretty big. Oh, my, every month. Boom, boom, just, just keeps getting bigger. Crazy. Since mean, I moved back to L.A. Is it mostly direct or you do it through direct. Su- supplement stores direct. and stuff? No, no direct. Direct. And supplement stores, they want a piece. and then they, So yeah, now I got soon. something for you, too. Uh, I brought something for you. We coming out with a gum. Really? Me, Big Boy, and my two other business partners. That's go just you think I'm buying cars now. That's go have <laughs> motherfucker go crazy. That's dope. Yeah, it's a new tropic gum with cafe. Oh, okay. Yeah, have you in here? I don't wanna like <laughs> <laughs> Where, what are we doing next? <laughs> That's dope. Uh, yeah. Are you like how would you describe your motivation? Like like it, it feels like you've accomplished so much in this world and been doing it for such a long time and a lot of YouTubers get burnt out at some point. Like they make a good amount of money year after year they're, they're just doing it and at some point they just they get sick of it and they can't keep going with with you it feels more like you've been so used to hustling in so many different right. ways well, that yeah. you just look at youtube and, and all this like it's just a, it's a lick waiting to be hit so for me i'm nowhere near what i want to be mm. so you figure i my numbers this year bro you got kids that's why i can't wait for my kids to start talking vlad and nikki Make mm. ten million a month off YouTube. Really, ten million for all they do is unbox toys. And That's the plan. So my goal is, I want to make a minimum of a hundred thousand off YouTube, a hundred thousand off Facebook. So you know Instagram monetized, don't you? Now you can do IGTV, yeah. Right. So yeah. that's why I just started posting. Yeah. So if I get 100000 off those every month, that's 300000 not counted by supper. I want to make a meal a month mm. starting 2022. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he like that. But that's only, that's bottom of the totem pole. My kids start talking, me and his focus is the kid channel. Mm. Ten, little, two little kids. 10 million a month. YouTube man. Kids app is a huge. If you can get your shit cracking on the Kids app, Whoa. you're in. Yeah. So that's our. Like, we just holding on to these motherfuckers start talking. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the plan. But, it, you know, yeah. we got all the merch and the subs and the. Um, uh, gum coming out. That's going to be huge. There's just certain things that people love so much that they just operate differently on youtube like the cars Mm -hmm. or or babies right or a hot girl yeah you know there's just certain things that just draw people girls still on youtube i thought they shut girls down you just have to be very (laughs) careful about how you present them in the thumbnail you know because i remember back in the day you used to be able to put a a a big ass with like tiny little shorts in the thumbnail boom you get two, two million views no problem well it's a little different now. Oh, yeah. They let little Nas X ride the devil, though. <laughs> you didn't like that? Huh? You didn't like that? His his fan base kids. Yeah. Like, that's the, bro, like. But I can't cuss. Like, we got to censor me cussing. Mm. We beep out all the cussing and all that now. I think that was little Nas X saying, like, actually, I don't want to be a kid's artist. I want to be a gay well, Satan yeah, worshiper. That's what I, I saw the, yeah, I saw the interview, but... So that's like me. I know my demographic. Right. Just doing some outlandish, like, and they allow it. Mm. That's the thing. You know what I mean? No, YouTube's all over his dick. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird. But, you know, they was on James Charles, too, and that, then they demonetized his ass. Mm. I'm, I'm, it's, it's 
is it almost kind of weird to you that you even know about James Charles? No. He's like a 20 year old makeup so, influencer, you know? So I know all about him too. I just think it's kind of funny that we're both YouTubers, so we know about this whole no, world. No, I'm know? a student to the game. Mm. PewDiePie was my teacher. Really? I used to watch his channel, like, oh, that's how he do his thumbnails, that's how he do his titles. Mm. Like, bro, like, I'm just different. I, I study whatever game I'm in, I study it. And I observe, I got to know what's going on. So when I never forget the OG when I was in the cell with him, that was a pimp. He said, bro, you read that, that fucking newspaper from page to page, mm. word to word. No matter what it is. You got to know the world around you. Exactly. The more you know about well, the world around you, the, the better you'll be able to spot the opportunities. Exactly. And he say, teach your hoes to do that too. When they're in Vegas, when they're in there, they mm. can talk with businessmen, construction workers, whatever. And I just live by that. I want to. So I grew up as a kid wanting to be smarter, stronger, uh, more handsome, more richer than everybody. Mm. As a baby. That's how my mind had worked. I have a friend, uh, Kiki, who I do live streams with, and he is a big ass dude from Compton, did time, been in gangs, all that shit. And I've been telling him, like, we were, we were stuck in traffic the other day because I had to go to court and I made him fucking be my little security <laughs> so I didn't get murked outside the Compton courthouse. Yeah, yeah. And I'm telling him afterwards, I'm like, I, I didn't mention you, but I started telling him, I'm like, bro, there's all these prison YouTubers now. I'm like, you. Just because you grew up in the streets and this gang shit and then you did prison time and the fact that you have a good personality, you can be one of these dudes and mm -hmm. I can help you. I can put you with other creators, people who are going to interview you, etc. You just got to get used to putting your personality on camera and mm -hmm. giving them a piece of you in every video. Yeah. What would be your advice to like a, a person who's in that position where he's lived this very real life? And I'm trying to tell him, I'm saying, listen, like you grew up in a fucked up situation. You got to sell this shit right back to those crackers mm -hmm. right now. That's what this game is yeah. about. You got to take your trauma and, and explain it to the world in a way that they can understand and digest. So like my boy, Fresh Out, he got the uh, YouTube channel Fresh Out. Um, I was his first uh, video on his channel. Mm -hmm. Went viral. Uh, he did Fed Time, ended up doing porn and all that stuff. Uh, but... Um, you got to want it, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you trying to get him a channel? I'm just telling him. I'm like, I'm going to help you start a channel. I'm going to help you get your videos going. And yeah, I'm going to show you how to do them your yourself. Live streams and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah he just, he got to want it. Yeah. Like, you, you can't force nobody to be something they hate. Were you ever awkward your first times getting on camera? Was it weird Man. for you to get into the mentality of, like, I'm going to sit so, here in front of the camera no, alone so listen, and make this video? So, my high school friends had to remind me you was doing all those fucking drama skits in fucking high school right because i tried to oh i don't know when i got like this or Dude, bro you was in fucking 12th grade doing whole skits in front of the whole school what you were you always about? that dude always since yeah. i was a kid i was a comedian class clown getting suspended and mm. all that all but it got stunted in the environment oh oh when you're quiet, people fear silence. Mm. And I learned, read all those fucking uh, war books. And you know what I'm saying? Mm. Where it, I became, I felt I was more powerful with being quiet. Mm. So when I got to L.A., this is God honest truth. As we was driving into L.A. with the U-Haul, when I seen entering L.A., it was like a demon just rose from me. Mm. And I'm like, damn. I didn't know what it was at the time. Then I just became who I am now. Mm. As soon as I left that environment in Oakland, I'm with two guns, bulletproof ass, just to protect the family if it came down to it, just mugging all the time. Like if you go to Oakland, go to Oakland out there, everybody, you'd, never, you'd be like, what the fuck going on? Everybody just a little swivel with mm. it. So that's how I was. As soon as I got to LA, I was like, shit. I could be the old me again. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do you feel... Even though I'm back on Swivel now. Really? Why are you on yeah, the Swivel yeah. now? This car should take shit to another level. What, people yeah, yeah. coming for you or, yeah, or thinking yeah, yeah. they could take something from yeah, you? Yeah, we've been in a lot of situations lately. Really? Yeah, especially because of cars. And I had two road rage situations where I almost wasn't here today. Where uh, you flipped out on somebody? So they flip out. But I flip, <laughs> you yeah, flip a little yeah, harder, yeah. yeah. So, uh, 
I had that situation. So it just been a lot of situations. That's what made me really go get my trust. Right. To stop, you know, in case something happened, my kids be okay. Uh, yeah, and I, and I try to be out less as possible. Mm. We work from like around 10 to 5 at a dealership, at uh, getting a mod done to a car, eating, just, you know, we try to stay in suburban places mm. or whatever. And, uh, yeah, just the devil been, you know, testing, man. And you can see in some of my videos, <laughs> they call me the knife man now. Say so I pulled a knife. Oh, I saw that. The guy outside. The, he goes, yeah. I have a big Instagram following right. just like you. <laughs> uh, and come to find out, he's in the circle. Right. So he knew what was going on. Right. But for me, at that time, of course, I, I saw him. I could have let it go. But I'm like, in my mind, I'm always thinking viral video now. Mm. I'm like, oh, shit, this could be a viral video. Yeah. <laughs> but that could lead you, you to some weird conclusions. Oh, without a doubt. Because then you start doing goofy-ass shit. You start well, yeah. making fake beef once you're really looking for, for no, views. No, nothing was that with was fake. I know, but I mean, like, well. if you were just always thinking, oh, I'm going to make this into a, a viral video, then that kind of could encourage you to do weird shit and, and do goofy-ass shit that you might not really respect. I see it happening to people all the time. Well, you know? so with me, it's just stuff like that. Like, another situation was dude at Venice Beach. A mm. uh, black dude going crazy and... And that could have been bad as well. It just so I'm this type of person. I'm minding my business, bro. Mm. If you get in my business, if you get murked, that was on you. I don't feel I can, I won't lose sleep at night. You never thought about moving around with security. I know it's kind of ironic the idea that someone could be like more intimidating than you, but <laughs> not at this point. Mm. No, I don't feel so. It's funny you say that because I always uh, talk about like The Rock, Kevin Hart. They, the life they live is shitty, bro. Mm, they do. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with that because... You can't do nothing. You're living in a prison. Yeah, yeah. you can't do... I don't want to... And I keep saying it, but God keep elevating me. I'm like, I'm cool mm. where I'm at, this position. And I just keep going, getting bored. Everywhere we go, I got tape and all mm. this. And it's like, I don't want to get to that point, man. I want to live and be... You know, cool. Like there's an old ass around. video of you uh, working out on the beach uh, by by in Venice, and it's like somebody's filming you from really far away, and they did oh, like it sixty went viral. million yeah. views. Yeah, and the craziest thing about that clip to me is just seeing like a lot of people don't know what it's like to be famous and what it's like to like oh you you do your little set of dips and then you have to take fifteen fucking photos right, right there on the beach. Yeah, and it's like for well, a lot of people they might not realize like oh shit he just had to spend like ten minutes taking all these exactly. photos that was crazy. Yeah. yeah, so I don't so I got traumatized as a kid from. Uh, he played for the Warriors, uh, Mitch Richmond. Right. Me and my two best friends, we went up to him. Uh, mm. He was eating or whatever, and I was like, uh, can we get a picture? He's like, bro, you don't fucking see me with my fucking family? Yeah. So at, I said I wouldn't. So, you know, in Oakland, we Oakland dudes hate celebrities anyway. <laughs> Rob, you, they know you're a town and shit, so yeah. I was one of those guys. So when I got known, I was like, I'm never denying nobody a picture. Mm. Never. To this day, I haven't denied nobody a picture. Really? Well, Pisses I could be up. in the airport, my plane late. <laughs> they like, hey, Kelly, but I'm like, run with me. Run with me, my plane late. <laughs> but when, when you're eating, it can be pretty rough, huh? Nah, I don't deny you, nobody. You don't give a shit? Nah. For me, if I'm like eating a steak, there's just something like, I don't want to fucking pose right now. Well, yeah. see, you got to remember, I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. So I can't take that for granted. Mm. And that could be, that picture can lead, man, Kali Muscle took a picture with me. It could lead to a sale mm. of pre-workout or, you know, anything. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I, 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 I'd never deny nobody. I respect it. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so... What what are you working on in terms of like bigger things, or, or where do you where where could you see yourself going? I'm sure that there's got to be some stuff floating around in your head of like, oh, so I could right take now, this to a different level. Right? Yeah, superhero, and mm. I'll be uh, you know, right now I got a show in the making. It's called Commissary Kitchen. It's been in the works for three years. It's almost uh, closed, um, and uh, so that the cooking show uh, is to help people that been down and out or whatever right but they got good cooking skills so that show uh superhero of course that's right. my ultimate goal to be a villain super i don't give a fuck mm. so marvel dc y'all see this y'all know man 
<laughs> and then uh, we got the kid channel we about to have. And, man, from there, everything else is already in motion. Supple bits, gub, everything is in motion. I just feel they need a real villain or superhero, mm. a, a real one. You know what I mean? Like all these other dudes, okay, he an actor, uh, but get some real mo- that been living it. Mm. I, I love it. I ain't gonna lie, I'd rather play a villain than a superhero. I could see, I don't know, I could see you with villain energy. Well, yeah. And it's funny, so before I got came back to LA a year ago, I was kind of swallowed up. I looked at my face. Like, nah, I need to trim up and get them cheekbones showing. Mm, <laughs> that's the flex. Get that villain, yeah, get that villain look. Yeah. When you look in the mirror and you just see your cheeks sunken in, and well, that's kind of like, mm. <laughs> yeah. But some could go too far. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. I don't know what happened to my boy. Uh, what soldier boy? I saw him <laughs> on there. I'm like, what happened to my boy? He needs to eat some more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looking sick and something. A lot of these rappers need to eat some more. Well, that's like I said in the video. Eat. They eating dope. Yeah. <laughs> they eating pills. <laughs> they don't eat food. They eat dope. You're totally sober. <laughs> Hell, this. Besides that, yeah, this. You, you don't smoke this weed. This my dope. No, nah, I used to sell it. I'm an ad, I'm an advocate against it. Okay. I you, used to sell it. I know what's in it. You don't think it's a good idea to to smoke weed? No, I'm an advocate against it. Really? I used to. So I had the first seller's license from Oakster down. Uh huh. And so you know me, I was slanging pounds, bro. But when I used to come out of that uh, fucking organic. Uh, so, at the store, the f- I come out with chemicals, buckets of chemicals. Mm. So it's the same shit used with meth down there that yeah. we putting in the hydroponics. Fucking, it's the same shit. I'm sold. Fuck weed. <laughs> he he was out. an advocate smoker. He been he stopped for a while. Really? Yeah. That's dope. And it's like we high every day. Mm. I, so I ain't gonna lie. Me with my ecstasy experience, whatever. Like, it just now feel like I'm high all the time. Mm. And I'll be like, damn, is this because I used to use X back in there? Or not? am I just getting old and see now? <laughs> <laughs> when I look back at my days doing ecstasy, I definitely do not miss that. That's me way too much. Yeah, yeah, me Way neither. too much. Yeah, because I would lose like 15 pounds every... Mm. So I would use it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Lose 15 pounds and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I gained it back. And <laughs> it was weird. Then I started getting this uh, electric current thing in my head mm. after a while. And I only use it maybe maybe that time frame, a year and a half. Right. But I used to get electric current. Like, shh, like I'd just be sitting down and this electric thing go through my head. That's what they used to always say is that it would be fucking stored in your brain or some shit and well, it could just seep out at any random moment. Oh, yeah. Well, no, yeah, no. I believe it. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. No more ecstasy. Let's just, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hold true to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo, this is an amazing interview. Uh, I wish we could go longer, but we should oh, definitely, yeah. we should do another one at some point. Hell yeah. Whenever you're ready. When I get bigger. When I get that movie roll. Mm. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I appreciate you so Hell much, man. Yeah. You got a ridiculous story and I'm a Thank huge you, fan bro. of the content. Yeah, and yeah, same here. Dope getting to talk. It was an in. honor being here, man. Y'all stay getting your money and muscle. Stay on your hustle. Get the jealousy out your blood. Facts. <laughs> Cali Muscle, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. And every Friday, we will be listening to your music. So pull up to the live stream. Appreciate you, man. Hell yeah. That's dope. <laughs>